Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm going to give you guys a story on me, the children, and the um, children services. Nastiness with women putting kids on you that's not yours. So, the reason we're getting a conversation, I just got a phone call from somebody who um, was concerned and I'm like, you know what, I gotta just speak on this, get this off my mind. So, my daughter, Jelena, you know, she has a biological dad without me. Due to the fact that the mother, back when I was 20, she was 18, she got pregnant. Now, she was pregnant already, but she decided to contact me after we broke up because of her being a cheater, you know, being a cause of me. Um, um, and, and later on in the story, I'll tell you guys, being a cause of me running through the park um, woods because the guy shooting at me. I broke up with her because of this same guy um, calling her phone, and she didn't denounce him as, you know, a guy she's dating. She called him a friend, even though the guy was threatening me for being her boyfriend. So I broke up with her. I was done. So I went to college. I'm in college. I'm in fraternity. Everything in my life was going good. She randomly pops up and, and um, you know, it's like, hey, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. So I engaged in that conversation in my Cadillac at the time. And one thing led to another. We ended up, I ended up shooting her club up. So after that, she goes in my, after like a week of passionate, like, like makeup, sex, you know, she goes in my, okay. So I continue school and I'm going with the flow and I can't, I can't, you know, get in touch with her because she's like gone. I get a phone call from her about six months later that she's pregnant. The math didn't make sense though. Math didn't make sense in regards to like when we messed around for her to only be, you know, six months pregnant, but we messed around like eight months ago. Just didn't make, didn't make sense. But I didn't care about it. I'm like, you know what? All kids deserve a father, so I'm going to be there. So she proceeds to, at the time, I was living in an apartment across the street from campus. She moves in with me, and everything's good. I buy a baby crib and, and stroller. Everything's purchased in advance, okay? Because I'm excited. I'm anticipating this, this baby being born. She has a baby shower. You know, everything's good. So she's about eight months pregnant at this point, and I decide to go play basketball. She comes with me. And the guy who she had that conversation with that she wouldn't denounce as nothing but a friend, he just has to come because me and him have words, me telling him to stop calling the phone because, you know, I'm a man and, you know, I'm paying a bill, blah, blah, blah. He decides to come to the park to fight me, pulls out a gun, gets to his friend. I told you the story. I'm running through the woods. He's shooting at me or shooting at me at the park and I'm running through the woods to try to get away from that situation. So she has my child, Jelena, about a month later, and we decided to move to another apartment up the street, which was bigger, nicer, had a gate around the whole building, and I had friends up, upstairs who, um, who had my back, and they were about life. So I'm like, okay, this is a win-win. So we're there, and she starts being for the streets again. She starts sleeping around with other guys. I'm finding out, but I'm like not believing the people telling me that she's sleeping around with me. I'm thinking that they're just hating. So I'm going with the flow. Woo -ba -doo, woo -ba -doo. So I find out because I'm in Washington that now she decides to mess with the guys upstairs because they saw her coming from the upstairs apartment. She claims they were just smoking, just hanging out. You're now for the streets. So I put her out and I kept my child there with me and I put her out. So she, after fighting me about that for like two or three months, me not letting her stay, because I let her come here and there to visit and I let her stay sometimes because I felt bad. And then she would mess up again and I would see a text message from a guy. So I kick her out again. So at this point, she threatens to, um, you know, child support and all these crazy things. I'm like, you know what? What do you want? And I agree for jo to join your custody. But I don't have no legal paperwork or nothing because as men, they don't make it easy for us to, to be, um, to have custody or whatever. So I thought that I had custody. Little did I know I didn't have no custody. I had no rights because I went and gave her after all this craziness she put me through and cheating and all that, I still had a heart and I gave her a thousand dollars to move into an apartment that was 500, 500 deposited and I gave her a thousand dollars for a car which she took the thousand and she ended up buying a car from me because I had told her it was a car that she can get for a thousand dollars down and, and uh, like 500 a month. It was my car that I gave to my friend to act like he was selling it and she caught on because she saw my name on the registration, I mean on the title um, when she finally paid it off. Uh, but long story short, um, I did that and everything was good for like the first month of her being in an apartment. 
but then she decides to get with this street dude who didn't want another man involved because you know the culture if you get with a street dude street dude doesn't want another man around you unless, even if you have a child with this man it's just a taboo stupid situation that is ignorant but she started not allowing me to see my daughter unless the guy was not there and then I can sneak over and see my daughter and then she would try to smash me and try to get money from me because she knew what I liked and knew how I was so she would seduce me and get money from me nasty situation so that went on for about a year and a half and my while this is going on I'm taking evidence of her I'm snitching pretty much of her um, wrongdoing to get the CPS to try to get custody CPS didn't care because come to find out they didn't care because the fi biological father was already on the welfare case so he's the father I'm not the father so I have no rights literally no rights so I, had, I was at her mercy to see my daughter or not see my daughter so I can only see her here and there so this went on for another two three years until daughter's about six years old in kindergarten six or seven in kindergarten and uh, the mom water and electric was cut off okay um, so guess what she decides to contact me and she needs a place to stay randomly just, I need a place to stay and you know daughter I want her here with no electric and you know it's cold whatever um, cold water whatever whatever it was so I let her at the time I was staying with my grandparents because I'm about to move into a house because um, this is when I uh, was doing the club and I got the house and I was evicting the people out the house so I could move in so she comes stays with my grandmother and or my grandparents and I look and I see that she's still talking to the dude who she was pregnant by because she was pregnant at this point yes I'm a simp pregnant at the point I thought she was done with the guy because the guy left her hanging he didn't want to own up he's a great dad now they have three kids together he's a great dad he's a stand-up guy now he's doing his thing but at the time he wasn't so what got me was um, she stayed with me for like a week and then at this point I'm like you gotta go so Jelena stayed and Jelena stayed with me for about three months at this point while just okay, or this woman got got her situation together so I go and get my daughter a whole new wardrobe I got her a pea coat I got her some jeans that actually fit. I got her some nice graphic t-shirts, some, some, a couple um, sweaters that, you know, the mom got mad because she said that I'm trying to make her daughter white, even though her daughter's already white and black, but she thought that I was trying to make her daughter square because she wanted her baby fat and fat farm and, you know, all those brands that, you know, we wear as adults, but not as kids. But yeah, some kids wear them, but she got mad because Jelena started to like to dress up, you know, classy. So. That was the first argument she she used to take Jelena from me and not let me see her. So she proceeded to take Jelena and she started playing this game. And I'm being a simp, like, what do I have to do to get my daughter? So then she put me on this mission to go find her some pills, to buy her $50 worth of pills. Come to find out these pills are for her boyfriend who she was pregnant by, who left her when the bills were due um, because he was going through something with a family member who died, got shot or something. So at this point, I said, you're for the streets. I cut it off, and I'm like, whatever. I guess I won't see my daughter. Even though, once again, she's not biologically mine. She'd rather have a loser thug be the father than a guy be a father who wanted to actually be there and hold her, her kid down. So um, I go and didn't see my daughter for like a few months at this point. So now I'm renting a car because somebody hit my car, and I'm renting a uh, nice car at the time. She sees me, so she decides to hit me up because she moves into a new place and she, you know, wanted money. So she hits me up like, hey, you can see your daughter, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's about to be your birthday. You know, she wanted me to pick up the slack for her birthday. So I come over, get my daughter, me and her, I get my daughter. She's like, um, you know, she sees the house. I, I'm like, hey, I'm about to buy these dogs for you. And I'm setting up a shop, okay? And this is like in a three week period, I'm about to buy these dogs. I'm about to buy her bedroom, set for a room, whatever, in, in my house that I got at the time. The mom gets into an argument with me because she wanted to have this hood classic Chuck E. Cheese birthday party um, with, you know, enough pizza and tokens for the adults to also enjoy Chuck E. Cheese because that's what happens. You know, they have like the packages that are like $99. That's enough for kids to get tokens, like 10 kids and, and enough pizza for like 10 kids and a few adults. No, she wanted the premium package that was like $300. That's enough for like, you know, 20 kids and like all their parents to eat. And then, you know, just to, you know, to show out because she figured I'm the page. So I should pay for this big grand yes, um, event. 
I'm like, no, we're gonna have a party at the park, Pavilion. I'm gonna use the money to get balloons, decorate it, have a DJ there, do it my way, because I'm paying for it. She didn't want to have that. So, long story short, I set this party up anyway and picked up Jelena, and we ended up having this party at the park. And um, it went down without a, without a, with a bang. It, it was great. I actually got video of it on my um, YouTube channel. You know, I called myself DJ DM at the time. So I had this party, everything was good. So she decides to use that, not giving her away with Chuck E. Cheese, um, and me not giving her no more money um, after the fact, to not let me see my daughter and to threaten to shoot me if I came around. Like she threatened to have the guy she decided to be with again, the guy who literally left her without bill money, who left her multiple times, who was cheating, only playing video games all day, wouldn't get a job. She threatened to let this dude shoot me if I came around to get my daughter because she knows how I am. I'm going to sit outside the house until you let my daughter come out. So, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I put my hands up. I'm done. Done. Had enough. So, I walk away from the situation, okay? At this point, I have no rights. I can't get rights. I can't get joint custody because she already has a biological dad who's on record at welfare. So, now, the next month or next year, I start being for the streets. I start go my whole phase. I encounter this woman who I got drunk out of my mind, blackout drunk, and I'm in a hotel with this woman. I wake up next to her, and I guess we had sex. As far as she told me. So, about two months later, she pops up and tells me she's pregnant with my kid. She's like, she wasn't dating or messing with nobody else around the time she would have got pregnant other than me. So, I'm like, okay, you know what time it is. Come move into my house that I had at a little apartment at the, at the time. Move into my apartment. I'm going to set, set up shop. Uh, we're going to get married. Everything's going to be great. So, she's going with this, and I'm literally taking her to her from, uh, at the time, school. Okay? Um... And everything was, I thought was great. But the one thing that was nasty was she wasn't trying to have no sex with me. And you know what's messed up? I guess I'm just terrible guy in bed. I must be. Because the, the, the thing about it is like, like I don't know if it's the other guys just tapping it the right way or what, but it's always sex with me. So she wouldn't have sex with me, and I had her living with me for like five months. Okay? So she's about seven months pregnant, eight months pregnant now at this point, And she decides to have an argument with me about nothing and she leaves so she goes in my a when answer the phone nothing for a week so i'm not the one i'm saying hooping and i get a phone call from the dad like you need to stop threatening come here i'm texting her phone like trying to you know get in touch with her like yo like what's up like what, what, what are we doing here after buying her all this stuff you know crib car seat you know buying everything she needed for baby the dad calls me like you need to stop stalking and harassing my daughter i see the text messages here you're blowing her up you need to get the point. She doesn't want nothing to do with you. You just need to man up, own up, and take care of your kid. I'm like, you do realize that she's manipulating me and, and now you. You do realize that it's a coincidence that she's a month and or so away from having this baby. She decides to have a full-blown argument with me after five months of not having one and a half sex with me or nothing. And, and sorry, news flag, your daughter is for the streets. She's a hoe. Everybody had her. And he... Didn't even get mad at me saying that because he knew what his daughter was about because he was a bus driver and he knew from you know the fact that she was all out here in the streets i'm like i manned up and i was gonna take care of your daughter but she decided to um play this game and like cut me off right before the baby's born because she figured that um i was going to still man up and be that child's father even though i wasn't going to be with her and i'm like so now i want a dna test because I'm not playing this game because she knows my past. She knows how I am with my daughter, Jelena, who's not biologically mine. But I'm still a father, blood or not, to her. She figures she can have that same deal. And I'm not having it. So he's like, okay, I understand. And, you know, going back and forth, he's like, I understand. Well, just don't contact her, communicate with her. When the baby's born, we'll do a DNA test. Welfare petition DNA test because, of course, she put herself on welfare. I'm not the father. So now, second kid. I'm, I'm, I'm going through it now because I fought. The day of that child being born to get in the hospital room to see that baby born. Come to find out she had the real father of the child in the hospital um, while the baby was being born. And then come to find out a few years later while I was in Vegas doing my thing. My cousin, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say my cousin, family member. Because the family member, I'm not going to put the person out there. He decides to, actually I'm not even going to get into that. Okay, that's just another nasty situation. That he didn't mean to do, but she was for the streets, so I get it. So, back to the point of hand, okay? Let's let's circle back here. Jim Saki. 
Um, I deal with that, not the father. So now I have a third child who I meet his mom. Um, I'm not gonna get into the situation other than to say that me and her, we fell in love. This is when I was at my peak of throwing parties, making thousands every, every week. Um, and me and her fell in love. She was really there for me. She gets pregnant, get her pregnant, and at this point, I'm marrying you. You know, it is what it is. But I'm not gonna really spill the beans on that because out of respect for her, all I'm gonna say is when I got to um, Illinois to be with her because I we came up with the plan of she would go to Illinois so she could have a family involved with my child and then I'll come when the baby's about to be born and I'll move there and we'll be a big happy family. I get there and she moved on from me to another guy. And I didn't know this until after three months of being there, I find out she's moved on. And I was just stuck because the grandmother at the time who was going through some things mentally, she was, me and her were cool now, we're tight now. I'm only telling her story because of the fact it's my life. I'm gonna, I, I, I get the right to speak on it. But she was abusive and mentally. I was to the point of wanting to do, just end it, to not be here no more. Because I burnt bridges with my family, my my friends, my family, uh, everybody for this woman. She didn't even want me. And instead of telling me that, you know, she did at the point, get to the point of saying, I need to, we need to date other people. Like, I need to, after finding out, she's like, it's all good. I don't care. I'm with this other person. You need to go and you find somebody. And she was telling me that here and there uh, before I found out she was with somebody else already. But I didn't believe it because I'm like, I'm literally, we're living with your family at this point. So why would I go and talk to somebody else when I'm with you? It made no sense, but she didn't give me time to look at my own place and figure it out. I ended up just moving back to Youngstown because I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna get into the details of it, but I'm like, she's for the streets too. Even though, you know, I loved her, all that. I just had, I had that mentality. So I moved back to Youngstown thinking the fact that, you know, two at different occasions, women were with other men I accepted the fact and I still wanted to be dad. Then another woman who um, was literally running game on me, um, you know, and she put her dad to try to check me and come to find out I'm not the dad biologically. I got all this going on. When I moved to Vegas at this point, I'm like not a dad because I don't have any DNA tests stating I'm a dad. I'm not paying no child support even though I'm trying to get child support for every kid so I can like get joint custody, and I'm doing a whole, all kids deserve a dad, let me be involved with this child, nothing. So I'm in Vegas starting over, single, trying to figure out, uh, I'm just lost. Because I was stuck on not knowing if I'm these child's father's father, or if I'm like single with no kids. I'm thinking, can I even have kids? Come shooting up a club with these women and like DNA test for the one woman, not mine, and then the first child, wasn't mine, even though I was shooting up the club and some other men's kids, so I'm like lost. So that's the reason why I'm an advocate for DNA test when the child is born. I think when the child is born, DNA test should be required or the mother should be responsible for all financial obligations, period. She shouldn't be able to put a man on, on a birth certificate and force a man to pay child support after the fact when she, when she does, is not offering or letting that man um, take a DNA test. Then I think that if a man such as myself um, owns up and says, I want to be the father to this child, even without a DNA test. If he vouches and says, I want that, he should not be um, denied rights when it's convenient for the woman. When a woman wants to let another man play dad and kick out that man who manned up and accepted responsibility for his child that might not be his, that shouldn't happen in America, but it, is, it does happen. So now I'm in Vegas for about five years now, six years not knowing, so I find out that my daughter is dealing with children's services because of the mom testing positive for drugs. And this is the daughter who has, you know, biological dad, not me. I called her mom, like, yo, let her move to Vegas with me. she have a better life, blah, blah, blah. She wasn't having it because she was being selfish. And she's like, no, I'm not letting her leave, but you can come if you give me this money and be in her life here. So I met, I cook up this master plan that I'm going to come bribe her. I got to give her the money. I'm going to come get my daughter back and I'm going to move back to Vegas. Didn't happen that way. I was stuck in Youngstown and that's when I tried to do the nightclub business and try to make it work in Youngstown. But I failed because of, you know, mainly because of COVID, the nightclub. But the mom, I moved to Columbus uh, without the mom knowing because the mom was absentee mom, even though she was trying to play on a good mom card. 
I take my daughter to Columbus and we set up shop. We get through the whole, because there's a couple times she hit me with the you're not my dad. And I forgave her for that due to the fact that um, I know she was going through trauma of having a situation where the mom didn't put a good man in her life. So we moved to Columbus and that's when, you know, she started having a, a normal life. Like she had a friend, I took to her and a friend to the water park multiple times and they enjoyed that. She had literally a childhood again. Like she was a child again. She was laughing and giggling and that meant a lot to me. So we fought the fight and then out of nowhere, um, uh, about three months into me being in Columbus, my son's mom comes out of nowhere like, hey, I'm in Youngstown. If you want to see your son, you can see him. Um, come to this place at this time. I hear her like, yeah, I'll be there. I show up, I see my son, it was awkward because he's at this point nine and like, you know, eight years go by and I'm like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to visit you and I'm going to go to a game, blah, blah, blah. So then we had that meeting, but then the mom for six months, I'm trying to arrange to see him and she's like, you know, I don't want you in and out of his life, blah, 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 you know, and I respect that. I, I understood that she thought that was going to happen. So, um, I arranged a plan to go see him, which I was able to go see him. And I decided, hey, I'm going to move here to be with you. Okay. But I said, it's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. I'm going to try to make it, make it happen. So me and my daughter, I, I pack up, move to Wilmington without my daughter's mom even knowing. So I go and we're in Wilmington. And now we're at the point that my son, everything's cool. As y'all saw, I was involved with my son every day. Everything was great. But mentally, I was messed up because I moved to this random city that mom moved to without, you know, my my consideration for my job or whatever or my work experience, my skill set was not set up for the city. But she, at the time, I wasn't involved. So she wasn't thinking about me at the time. It was her career and her family that was already there. And I respect that. And I understand that. But I moved there with no plan, no, no goal set, nothing. So I get there and I'm doing rise here. And it's a struggle to make it because rideshare is up and down. And I can't take a break to not do rideshare to do something else because I have bills to pay. So my daughter, she decides to move back because, you know, I let her move back because her mom, she wanted to try to save her mom from herself. So she goes back and that's a whole other chaotic situation that I shouldn't allow to happen, that I let happen, um, which transpired into my daughter's mental health literally going from great to like actually being bad to being great when she was with me for those years to back down again. So chaos is happening and I'm trying to resolve that, not telling you guys on YouTube that I'm sending money every single week to try to fix that situation because I still was financially responsible for my daughter because the mom wasn't providing food, nothing that my daughter needed. I had to pay for all that. I've to this day paid my daughter's cell phone bill since the day I moved from Vegas to now. Um, I've taken care of that. I've taken care of everything for my daughter. And, you know, I should not allow my daughter to go back, but I did because I thought that she can help her mom. And I wanted her to be happy being around her family again because she was with my son's family out of Wilmington because we knew nobody other than my son's family. So now I'm dealing with that situation. I'm sorry for jumping for my son, um, but I'll get to that in a second. So now I'm dealing with the situation that the mom was just a terror to my daughter. And she ran around talking about, I'm a good mom, I'm a good mom, but she's a disaster. So she's been missing for like almost a month now. And it got to the point that they put a missing person report out on her mom. And the scary, spooky situation is that the mom called her after I go through, or children's services go through them telling me I'm um, legally her um, guardian. I can come get her and she can come move with me wherever I'm at if I choose because I'm the father of the birth certificate. Um, the mom um, has pretty much a situation where her daughter hasn't been in school for months, literally months, and just a messy situation. The mom calls her, my daughter a couple of days ago, like, I've been in the hospital for a week, you know, I'll be back. But it's kind of spooky because I now get a call from my daughter's godmother telling me that my daughter, which I'm about to call her, talk to her about it. She doesn't even know if that was my, her mom's voice. So... That might have been her mom. That could have been like somebody random acting like her mom. But it's spooky because she said exactly what my mom, what her mom would have said when she was going on one of these binge binges. So now I'm dealing with that right now to where I was excited about talking about my daughter and all that again, which I am right now. 
But now I gotta chill because the mom might come out of nowhere if she's still here with us. That wasn't her spirit randomly calling on an unknown number, which is spooky. Um, she might come out and try to get me for child support or whatever because I just vouched myself as the dad. You know how the child support system is. They'll try to like find a way to make some money and try to you know utilize that message that I gave or that call that I had with the um, CPS worker. They'll try to say that I should pay child support for all those years even though she has a biological dad. But that's another story. So now the mom's still missing. My daughter's going through chaos right now, um, not knowing what's going on. Trying to, we're trying to get her into school. So now we revert back to my son. All those years I have my son. Now I got my son. Everything's going good. But mind you, financially and mentally, I'm a wreck. Because in Wilmington, I, it ain't made for me to make money for what I know how to do. I have to learn a new skill and do a job that I'm going to probably be miserable doing um, to make staying in Wilmington happen. So it got to the point that <coughs> I had YouTube going good. I was doing good with Rideshare. But Rideshare collapsed on me out of nowhere. Okay? Collapsed. YouTube collapsed on me. Okay? Because I was relying or tried to rely on YouTube, which was stupid. Okay? So I get to a point that I had a manic episode and I go to um, South Carolina to try to make money in a big city real quick so I can get enough cushion to get out of debt. I put myself back in. That didn't work out. So I got to the point that I said, you know what? I'm going to go. I called my son. I called the mom and I said, hey, I'm going to go to um, California because I know I was in Nevada. Um, I want to go to California because I have somebody that's going to be there to support me. This, this challenge that I'm going to take to go to California. I'm going to try to make um, ten to $20,000. Then I'm going to come back and set up shop again in Wilmington. It's only going to be two months. But this two months have now turned into three months and turned into a blossoming business that now I'm building out here, but guess what? I'll be able to move it to Wilmington because it's, it's a business that I can do anywhere remotely. So now I'm setting up shop to where I'll have two locations here in California and in Wilmington. And my son is gonna now have a father who's gonna be mentally great because he's gonna be happy doing something that he loves to do that's financially um, structured that he'll be able to provide anything that's needed. Like my son is, you know, kids are expensive. Yeah, my son understands the stuff he needs, I couldn't afford. Like his glasses, $300, randomly. This computer that he wanted, I got it. I was able to get it. This computer is freaking $1,100. You know, he needs stuff. You know, you just, fees pay for basketball. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna say these are wants, not needs. It's easier said than done. When you're a parent, you want to get kids things that are necessary. I want his competitive juices to continue to grow and flourish. So that's the reason why he needs to continue doing sports. He needs a tutor that I couldn't afford to pay for. I will be able to pay for because of the fact he's he has a learning disability like I have to where you have to be interested in something to actually learn it, to want to learn it, to remember it. He's the same way. If he doesn't, if he's not interested in something, he's not going to respond to it. That's just how we, our minds are built. So with the tutor, tutor would actually help him engage and learn subjects that he just can't understand. And his mom, she doesn't have time because she's always working because of her job. And I don't have time because I was a rider all the time. But now I'll be able to in another month to when I go back to Wilmington, I'll be able to assist him with his school. I'll be able to, with schoolwork, I'll be able to assist him um, with the things he needs financially, okay? Assist the mom, and I'll be able to take care of business, okay? And then back to my daughter, her situation is bleak with the mom. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. Um, I'm nervous because here's the thing. I, my daughter, she got upset the first time I said this, but she understands it now. You don't want to be a burden on people to where you not being here is people are better off without you being here. Sad, but it's, it's true in that situation. Now, I should not have been mad that the mom came out of nowhere if that was truly the mom that called. Came out of nowhere because she should be here. She shouldn't be dead. Wants her dead. But you set yourself up for that reality that people are better off without you being here, sadly. 
And I know that's a nasty thing for me to say, but it's the truth. But to wrap this situation up, this is why my life is so chaotic, guys. Okay, when it comes to my life. It's because of children, because of the mothers, and because of the fact that I just, I already had no structure, but I, this just caused chaos. The way my life, I wanted it to go and what it could have happened, and now in hindsight, I wish happened was this. When my daughter was born, I wish I would have went and got a custody lawyer, a children's lawyer, whatever they're called, and got custody before the mom went about getting a DNA test on that other man. Because Jelena deserves to have structure. And I had structure at the time. She would have had a loving home, even if it wasn't with her mom. I should have did that, but I didn't do that. I just let the streets live. So I let the mom run around putting different men on my daughter as their father or as her father. And then finally, the one guy that stuck or stuck, the guy that was in jail, um, came out trying to be a dad, actually never provided anything. You know, like I said before, threw his lamp and was out after three weeks. She found out he was the dad and tried to make him stick, and that was a disaster. So I wish I would have did that because my daughter would have structure right now, okay? And I would have structure because I wouldn't have been running around chaotic not knowing what to do. But I didn't do that, so that's on me. I blame myself for that. Second, when the second, when my son was born, I should have, after dealing with what my, I dealt with with my daughter, I shouldn't have gave the speech about blood or not blood, I'm there. I shouldn't have did that. I should have got a DNA test because guess what? That would have put me on a hook for child support and I would have had joint custody and I would have had full rights to see my child. I wouldn't have had to go through the years of not seeing him and the fact of not being able to request a DNA test or anything without permission from the mother. I shouldn't have went ghost multiple times from the situation and just letting it, waiting for it to play out. I should have actively pushed to make it happen, but I allowed my family friend at the time, a lawyer, to tell me that nothing you can do. In, in Illinois, you can't petition DNA test without the mother's permission. I should have fought for it. That's on me. I blame myself for that. Because if I would have fought for it, I would have got um, tested and you know, I would be right there in Illinois, or now in Wilmington, may not move from Illinois, but I may have, I would have been there and I would have had my son and I would have built up shot there. But instead I was in Youngstown, just begging a mom to let me see my son. Stupid situation I put myself in and it wasn't good for anybody. I blame myself because I should have manned up and took care of business. The third situation, I should have not jumped the gun. She was for the streets. I should have waited until the baby was born before I spent the dollar. And then as soon as the baby was born, take a DNA test. Then if the baby was mine, which wasn't mine, I would have bought everything needed and just been a joint, I would have co-parent, I would have had joint custody and I would have just paid child support. That's what I wish I would have did, but it's in the past now. Fourth situation, I didn't tell you guys, I'm gonna tell you guys now. I'm in Vegas and this woman um, decides to contact me about two weeks after we messed around that she's pregnant and she was trying to get abortion money. Now, I believe in abortion if um, the child is um, going to be in a toxic situation, but I'm not going to put a toxic situation for a kid so or create a toxic situation. So I told the woman, if she wants to do that, I'll pay for it, but I want this child if she's if this child is indeed mine. So she played games, you know, for a week or two. Then I put two and two together and realized that she wasn't pregnant. So now this is the fourth situation that I was in. And at this point, I promised myself that I would never ever sleep with anybody I can't see myself marrying. And I've held, stand, stood true to this, um, this, this belief or whatever you want to call it to this day, to where people call me a simp and crazy for only having about five different people um, um, having sexual whatever with five different people in the past what eight years eight years okay actually let me retract that not five people ten people which and you would think 
is still a lot, but in reality, not. For a single guy living in Vegas, living in different places, about 10 different people. Um, yes. Um, but here's the situation. Which is going to sound nasty, guys, but I'm being candid and I can't turn my back on you guys now. I lived in Vegas for five years. About seven of those people had happened in two years. But then the other, let's say, eight years of, or nine years of my life, maybe two or three people. You know? Um, I just don't mess around with women unless I see myself getting married to them. Okay, because of the fact I told myself if somebody else get pregnant, I'm marrying them. I'm not, I'm not playing this game no more. So that's the reason why I get called simp, and people can't believe that I went at one point a year and a half without having sex. And prior to coming out here in California, I didn't mess with nobody in like eight months. You know, it was that um, the girl who. You know, friends with benefits, literally, who I stopped talking to because she wanted more and I just wasn't on that. Um, but I had options. I had women who I was talking to. I literally just said, no, I can't. Like the woman who left her baby in the car while she ran back in the family dollar, the first lift ride with me. Then I could have literally messed with her because she was like, hey, I want to come to your house. But I'm like, no, I just didn't trust it. So I left it alone. So I had options, but I just didn't do it. So that's my life. That's the reason why my life is so chaotic and why, you know, when I finally found somebody who I feel was loyal, legit, single with no kids, who gone through the same things I've gone through, um, except not with kids, but with, you know, being cheated on and abused, I jumped on it. So this was a long, long, long little conversation with you guys that I wanted to have, but I just want to explain to you guys why my life is so chaotic why I have, you know, random kids in different places and just chaos. But one thing I will say, my son's mom, I respect that I got her. She went to school for six years for nursing, okay? She's a nurse making big money. She got my son even if I'm not even there. Like, she has no issue with that. But my son needs me, and that's the reason why, the biggest reason why I'm out here, setting up shop, figuring things out with this business because once I go back my son is not going to see me mentally messed up he's going to see me happy financially comfortable able to provide everything that's needed and being able to spend time with him instead of literally driving every day where I share or working a 9 to 5 with most of his hours being while he's out of school because that's most of the jobs that will be available to me I will have to work while he's in school or while he's out of school and then when he's out of school or while he's in I mean, while he's out of school work but then when he's in school not work and then guess what? It's going to be tough to see him. And then some jobs, you know, um, I don't have time at all to really see him, you know. So this affords me the time when I go back. I've only been gone from him for about now three months, you know. What's one, two more months before I get back to routine, back and forth, Wilmington, California. Then after a year, it's going to be mostly Wilmington, Um you know, California, maybe a week, a week and a half out of the month. But, but, a big but, he's going to enjoy now my energy, my time more than ever, because now I can actually focus on him and not think and look at the clock every five minutes like, okay, I got to get back to work. So, that's the video. Um, go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I know this is chaotic and nasty, but this is the life of, I, I gotta say, a black man in America because other men of other races, they don't deal with this. I mean, they deal with this. I'm talking about as a whole, generally speaking. They can go to church services, or they don't go to church services. Usually, they just don't have to deal with it because um, the system is set up. They want, you know, certain races of men to be involved with their kids they want that but it's a war against black men in america right now to where black men we got it to hard we got the hardest struggle and battle to be involved with our children it shouldn't be this way we should literally have the same rights same ability that other races of people have to have our kids and yes you got people in the comments saying this ain't a race issue and you're being racist blah, blah, blah. you're gonna have that 
But no, I'm not being racist and being truthful because the black men in the comment section below will vouch that we're the only men who will be the most stand-up guys and we're out here being called Debbie Dads the most. But it ain't that. It's just the women choose to be with the 15% of men who have multiple kids and are taking care of. Those are the men that the women will choose to put kids on, but the men who are single without kids, which was me at one point, you know, over 50% of, of black men um, are single without kids. We don't get, at that time, me and a lot of men, we don't get to have the pick and selection of women because we're considered square and corny because we want to date for marriage. But the man that just want to sleep around and date because he want to hit, he has the buffet of women. So that's the reason why I go so hard and speak on these issues because I'm a living example of it. So I know this video might be controversial. People might be mad at it. But some people are going to respect it. Some people are going to understand. But this is my life. And this is what led me up to the point I'm at right now. Being in California. Um, doing this business. As you can see behind me. Um, working on this YouTube. Working on the business. Working on the means that's going to allow me to um, create generational wealth for my son. Just like my uncle created for me that I fumbled and blew. Except this time, my son is going to be in a better position because he's going to learn from my mistakes on how not to blow money that is going to be given to him. Because my son and my daughter are both going to have opportunity to take over my business that is going to be successful. You guys can say at the end of the year, you're going to be like, man. Because what I'm doing as a business is something that's never going to go away. Even if you have the purge and you have America destroyed, you're always going to have a business of buying and selling and trading. Always. Always. So that's the reason why I'm so passionate and involved in this. And as I told you before, cybersecurity is my um, fail-safe plan because I'll be in cybersecurity. I'll be doing that. If the other things don't work, I'll have cybersecurity. That's guaranteed money. But if the business worked and I'm able to build it up, then guess what? I'm going into politics because that's ultimately my passion. It's debating politics and I want to ultimately get into politics to affect change for communities such as the one I grew up in and the kids who I grew up you know at the at the point of me being a kid I grew up um, you know being friends and, and having family bonds with I want to help those kids have a future have a better chance at having a future the future that I was afforded and provided the opportunity to have that I fumbled due to not being financially literate so I'm hoping that I'm able to affect change by having programs such as home program that I had that I'm a pitch to to the mayor Youngstown pitch to multiple people to run with home simple course to where you learn how to uh, balance a checkbook how to grow your own food how to raise a family how to make better decisions in having children um, how to work you know things that us black men black women but black men especially were taught back in the 50s you were taught because most men black men were conservative back in the day in regards to conservative lifestyle to where you believed in marriage even though you might have your little, little mistress on the side but you believed in marriage and only having kids with your wife you know and if you had a kid but got a woman pregnant that was not your wife you married her that's that was expected you didn't have kids out of wedlock and then you would have your mistress on the side, but she knew not to mess up your happy home. She knew not to come around the house. She knew not to call the house. It is what it is. So I'm not going to talk about the good, but then not talk about the bad. You had that. My grandfather dealt with that. My grandfather had a mistress who he ended up being with at the end of his life. But he had my grandmother. My grandmother, she he made sure he came home to her every day. He didn't embarrass her. Nobody knew about the mistress, but him and her. And it was, it is what it is. But the whole point about it was, um, the man provided to care of home. Now you have a culture where a man is demonized and called a simp and, and a square for trying to provide that for a woman. You know, women, some women look down on that. They think that man is weak for wanting to provide and hold down and marry this woman that he got pregnant. It's sad that we live in a society and a culture that women, uh, rather, women are more scared of marriage than getting pregnant. Women would literally get pregnant, and if you ask them to marry, marry you, they'll like.
question that and maybe say no. But if they're pregnant, they're not getting that abortion. They're going to go through with the pregnancy like it ain't nothing. But back in the day, in the 50s, 60s, a woman wouldn't dare have that baby or think about having that baby without that ring being on the finger first. That's the home program. What the home program needs to teach. Because guess what? Statistically speaking, kids do better in a two-parent household with two parents married. Yes, the parents, I know people are going to say the 1% of situations where kids shoot up a school with two parents. Yes, that happens. But guess what? I'm speaking of majority. The majority of kids that grow up in two-parent households, okay, do better. They graduate high school at higher rates and they get some college. They work. They don't have a criminal record before age 21. More often than not. So why wouldn't you put a kid in that position to be statistically set to succeed? Why put a kid in and give all the kids all the variables that cause the kids to more than likely end up with a criminal record, pregnant by the age, or a kid by the age of 21? Why would you set them up? And the biggest statistic is having a child without a father in the house or involved. That right there is a recipe for disaster. And that's the reason why you have a lot of boys nowadays, young kids, black boys mainly, that grow up emotional, soft, like feel like they can hit women, abuse women, like treat women like dogs because of the fact when that's all you see, because you just see a bunch of loser men, um, you know, around your mother treating your mom like crap because she doesn't get the picture until she's in her 30s that she needs to have a good, solid man in her life instead of these wannabe thug dudes. And I'm sorry, guys, to get too, too deep at the end, but this is what I what I dealt with. These, these women didn't want me because I was just that typical square who wanted a fully functional home. They didn't want me when I was younger. But then when I got older and I figured it out, now you got these women with kids out here who want me to settle down with them. And they talk down on me because I don't want you at this point. Why would I want, if I already have possible kids that I might have to hold down in the future, why would I want to go into a relationship with a woman that already has kids that I have to man up and, and own up to because their father went MIA? That's not my responsibility. You know, and I would never go into a situation with a woman with kids and not look at those kids like they're not mine. And mind you, I'm the guy that, but to this day, I would date a woman with kids. But I shouldn't be forced to. You shouldn't force me and look down because I tell you openly that I don't want, at this point, I have two kids. Even though, you know, you know the situation with my daughter. But she's still blood or no blood, doesn't matter. She's still mine. She's still my daughter. So I have two kids. But to this point, I prefer a woman with one kid or with no kids. Because of the fact, kids, women with multiple kids and, and kid fathers, they literally pass stuff on guys like me. And more than likely, now they were ready to settle down. I get that all the time. And I'm pretty sure you guys in the comments will vouch. You get that. They say that they're ready to settle down and, and they find God. And it's always, they always put you through the, the stage of like, they say they don't want to have no sex for like a, a 90 days. And, and you should want them for them. No sex till marriage. They hit you with that after they got four kids. You know what I mean? Women, like I'll go on Facebook dating back in the day when I was on that, those apps, Tinder. Woman that had three kids, and she'll say, um, I don't want to have um, sex until marriage, or you gotta wait 90 days because they think that you should pay the price for them having kids by loser guys that aren't there who they gave it up in a week to. But no, you're supposed to wait 90 days to, to like, we're adults, we're humans. I'm not waiting more than a week, okay? I can't remember the last time I waited more than a week. The times I waited more than a week were women who I ended up not doing nothing with because they ran game on me. They literally had me chasing them for a month or two, and then it, it was time to get the business started, and I left with a hard on. So that's the reason why I go so hard in regards to... Actually, that was bad wording there. But that's the reason why I go so hard on single mothers when you see me do my lives. It's because a lot of single mothers, I hate when they say they didn't choose to be single mothers, when they chose 
these guys. They chose men who they knew were not fit to be fathers, or they put men like me, who wanted to be fathers, through hell and hot water to try to have their kids. That's interest. You know, I shouldn't have had to bite and crawl, claw to have my daughter. I should have been, she should have been begging for me to have this child instead of begging for this loser guy who's in jail to have this child when he didn't want his child because if he wanted his child, he wouldn't have committed crime that would have landed him in jail for years. So I'm going to end it there. Um, this was like a mini podcast talking about something completely different than last year. Um, you know, as I said before, I know a bunch of you are going to unsubscribe. You are not going to like what I have to say. But go ahead and hit the unsubscribe button because I'm done trying to create content to make a few people happy that enjoy Raja content. I'm creating content that I'm happy about talking about. And I'm not really happy about talking about this. But this conversation is needed before I go into talking about other things. Because I don't want to be a walking hypocrite of people thinking that I'm just talking just to talk. No. I've had trauma all my life. This is why. So, let me know what you think about my story. Let me know what you think about my life. That's all I got for now. I'm out. Peace.